Jesus. Say yes, somebody. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
What a day to be alive and to be in the presence of the Lord. Not the presence of the head of state of Ghana or President Clinton. I almost said Clinton. You see, my wife doesn't, doesn't, uh, my wife doesn't serve me tea these days. So my R M I L, I'm having problems. I'm having problems. But we thank the Lord that we are alive. Hallelujah. And we believe that today is a powerful day and a special day in my life and your life. Amen. I believe that we have had, um, I, I believe that the greatest encounter this church has ever had this past week. Hallelujah. It has been those of you who missed the miracle wave. It's okay to get a video, but I don't know, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's indescribable. It's, it's, it's momentous. In fact, that is even an understatement. Hallelujah. But we believe God, we thank God so much for his visitation and for what he has done. Honorable Counsel, how is it? Powerful. Um, it's a joy to be and to see what God is doing. You know, one of the things that came strongly to me is that the more I see the bishop preach Hello. and minister, the more I discover that I don't know him yet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The more I, I discover that this man that God has given to us to lead us, I don't know him yet. Amen? Amen. But I thank God for the anointing of God upon his life. And I'm glad I am in this ministry. And under his, I, I am glad that he is my pastor. He's a pastor I can thank God for. Amen. Amen. And I believe that tonight, I'm sorry, I said tonight because we have had even meetings, isn't it? It's also because of the tea. But <laughs> I believe that this Easter morning, once again, God is coming our way with a powerful word. Somebody say powerful. powerful. This Easter Sunday morning, God is bringing a word that is relevant for your life. Those of you who listen to Mega Word this morning, you, you, you hear, can I wash my hands? <laughs> I'm sure some hearts were beating, but I thank the Lord for the word. Hallelujah. But something powerful is coming to you, not on television, not on radio, not through books, but live. I said live. I'll kindly ask us to stand to our feet Give honor to whom honor is due. And let's invite here the right reverend Dr. Doug Heward Mills, the founder and bishop of this church, to minister to us this morning. All right. Shabbat. Hallelujah. Barak. Praise the Lord. Shabbat. Hallelujah. Barak. Praise the Lord. Shabbat. Hallelujah. Barak. Yada now, yada. Extend your hand. Toda means lift up your hands. Lift up. And takwa means to clap. Come on. Come on, Shabbat, Shabbat. Hallelujah. Bara. Praise the Lord. Shabbat. Hallelujah. Bara. Praise the Lord. Shabbat. Hallelujah. Bara. To heal it means to sing everybody sing it halal means to celebrate and kara means to give the lord some steps now One, two, three. hallelujah amen let's share with a prayer father thank you for this morning as we come before your holy word for a few moments we ask you to speak to our hearts. Let your will be done. Let us not leave this place the same as we came. We ask it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated on this Easter Sunday morning. We thank the Lord for bringing us here. For those of you who do not know, um, Easter Sunday morning is... Um, an anniversary for us it is an anniversary because exactly six years ago on the 11th of April it was 1993 we moved to this building hallelujah and um, six years 1993 is that not so yeah. 11th April, that was Easter Sunday. And um, 
the Lord has done many things, good things for us in these six years. Um, when we came here, we had only one branch, and today we have a hundred branches. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, that's a good place to clap and to shout. Well, those upstairs are not clapping at all. They are in a different realm. All right. Um, I believe that I believe that it is very significant. A year ago also, we first occupied this car park exactly a year ago, Easter Sunday. That is when we occupied the occupied territories. All right. And um, and then um, on the 27th of May, I believe it was, we were attacked, our walls were broken down, and then on the 31st of May, we were attacked. So we are celebrating many great things that the Lord has done for us. Through many, Bible says, through much tribulation, we must enter the kingdom. Praise the Lord. So we thank the Lord. Today, my message is very short and it's entitled, Will the Angels Appear? Will the Angels Appear? Matthew chapter 26. It's still in the Easter theme. Matthew chapter 26. Will the angels appear? All right. Now, um, you can hear the sound of music. It's because... We have different churches going on at the same time. The J Church is going on upstairs. The, um, it's not coming from J Church, yeah. And then uh, the other buildings. Are you saying something to me? You're going upstairs. All right, what's up? Ah, okay, yeah. Some people can come upstairs if you, the choir, the place is full, so quickly please, the worship choir perhaps, if you could, if you wouldn't mind just coming upstairs, worship choir, you don't like coming up, eh? so that we have some more space, please, worship choir, please, please, we beg you. And, and this way as well. Some of you go this way. Well, they don't want to move and they are not going to move. Too bad. All right. Will the angels appear? Matthew 26. How many know that we need a bigger church building? Can you feel it? Yes. All right. We thank the Lord that he's going to give us a better place. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Matthew chapter 26, verse 47. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. All right, verse 49. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which betrayed, one of them which betrayed, um, verse 51, and behold, one of them which, which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then Jesus said unto him, 
Put again thy sword into his place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Verse 53. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve angels, legions of angels. All right. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? Hallelujah. Amen. How then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? In that same hour said Jesus to the multitude, Are thou come out against, as against a thief with swords? Turn with me to Isaiah now, chapter 37. Isaiah chapter 37. All right, Isaiah chapter 37. And then we're going to read verse 32. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of, are you, are you there? Yes. Out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord shall do this. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it. By, verse 34. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and he shall not come into this city, says the Lord. Verse 35. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake, and for my servant David's sake. All right, verse 36. Then the angel of the Lord went forth, and smote in the camp of Assyria a hundred and four score and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. All right? So we'll just end our reading there. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. All right? Now, I'm just sharing with you a very short but important message and the title of my message is, Will the Angels Appear? Will the Angels Appear? Now, um, when Jesus was being arrested by his um, murderers, the Bible says that one of, the, one of his disciples took a sword and cut off the ear of the servant, of one of the servants of the high priest. And Jesus immediately said, stop it. For he that comes by the sword will go by the sword. Then he said something that I want you to take note of. He said, do you not think that I can ask my father to send 12 legions of angels right now to deal with this situation? Are you listening to me? Yeah. I'm preaching for a short time, so I want you to listen carefully. It says, do you not think I could ask my father to send 12 legions of angels? Now, one legion of angels is made up of 6,000 angels, all right? So 12 legions is 12 times 6. If you remember your times table, 61662. 12, 6, 3, 18, 6, 4, 24, 6, 5, 30, 6, 6, 36, 6, 7, 42, 6, 8, 48, 6, 9, 56, 6, 10, 60, 6, 11, 66, 6, 12, 72. So 6,000 times 12 is 72,000 angels. Are you with me? Upstairs, are you listening carefully? Jesus is saying that, don't, do, you, do you think I cannot ask my father to release 72,000 angels right now <laughs> to come and sort out all these guys? You just put this sword back. I know what I'm doing. Now, we read in Isaiah chapter 37, where the Lord sent one angel to go and fight some people. And I want us to see how many people one angel can kill. 
in verse 36 of Isaiah chapter 37, it says, Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand. A score is 20. Four score is 80. So 185,000 Angel soldiers were killed by one angel in operation. Are you listening to me? Yes. Now we have to do some calculations here today. And I want those of you who are very good to, real, to just calculate it. Somebody's got a calculator right there. I hope your calculator doesn't get spoiled with this. <laughs> now if 12 legions of angels are released... That is 72,000 angels. And one angel can kill 185,000 people. Then how many people can 72,000 angels kill? What did you get? 13 billion or million? Billion. Billion. 13 billion 320 million people. <laughs> Are you listening? Are you getting that calculation? 185,000 times 72,000 is equal to times 72,000 is equal to 13 billion 320 million. How many people are there in the world now? Six billion. <laughs> in other words, God is showing us right here that if Christ had, you see, what I want you to say, do you not think that I can ask my father to send me now 12 legions of angels. In other words, what he's trying to tell us is that the, the, the power is so much that could wipe out the whole world. In fact, what he's saying is that there's so much power available to just destroy all these evildoers. But I want you to look, I think we should look in, into it again and see what Jesus said. Look at Matthew 26. Thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels, but, you see, that's the question. Will the angels appear? The answer is no, they will not appear. How then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? Hallelujah. That thus it must be. Amen. This is a very important revelation for us all. There are many times we wonder, can God not send his power now to just do something? Let me start with, there are several things, but I don't think we can even talk about many of them. But I just want to talk about one or two of the things which God could send angels and his power to do. But he is not doing it. Not because he does not have the power. But Jesus is demonstrating to us right here that the amount of power available, if he just to open his mouth, will wipe out the whole, even today, the, with the six billion people on earth, these angels Jesus was talking about could kill everybody twice over and there'll be some spare there'll be some angels who will not have a chance to do it who will not have any work to do hallelujah no people can sit over here right there coming in all right now listen to me um i want you to understand that there are many things that god will not send angels and no angel is going to appear number one if you are doing evil evil you are living in sin angels are not going to appear amen 
Angels are not going to appear. Will the angel appear if you are living in sin? The answer is no. No angel is going to surface anywhere to do anything. Because God's word, you see, Jesus said that, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And if you look in Romans chapter 2, and um, if you, have, you are fast enough, you can tend to it. But if you are not fast enough, just make a note of it. In Romans chapter 2, it says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. Verse 3. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Verse 4. This is the verse we are looking for. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. All right? Now, I want you to notice here that the reason why God's supernatural power and his supernatural angels are not appearing on the scene is because the scriptures must be fulfilled in your life and in my life. The reason why you are allowed sometimes to go on, it seems that as if God is not even alive. As you continue to live in sin, as you continue to do wrong things, it's not because God has no power to make an angel appear in the room as you are doing all those evil deeds, but it's because in Romans 2 verse 4, the scripture says that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. That is the kindness of God is leading you, is trying to coax you into his love. That means that God's patience for you in all the mistakes that you are making is because he's trying to give you an opportunity to come nearer to him. And he's trying not to destroy you before your time. It's not that there is no power. It's not that God has not seen. It's not that God is blind. The Bible says in Proverbs 15 verse 3 that the eyes of the Lord are everywhere beholding the good and the evil. So ladies and gentlemen, as you hear the sound of my voice, I want you to know that God is saying that it's not that he hasn't got supernatural power to stop you from doing the wrong thing or stop me from doing the wrong thing, but he is allowing you some room because the Bible says the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, but not that there's no power. Number two, why, why, is, it that, why is it that the angel of the Lord does not appear when we are being persecuted. Level, have you thought about it? Why does the angel of God not appear, Olivia, when we are being persecuted? When we are being attacked? When the blood, I remember, almost a year ago, we had washed blood in the church premises. Blood, blood of church members. Why, why did the angels not appear here suddenly? You know how many did Jesus, Jesus say? 72,000. Now if you had given us even one or a baby angel, maybe a newborn angel. <laughs> that would have been, take, what do you think? That would have been enough. Just maybe one baby angel will come to walk around. It would have been enough. Why didn't the angel appear? Why didn't they, will the angel appear? No. Because the scripture must be fulfilled in 2 Timothy 3 verse 12, which says that they that will live righteous in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You cannot live a Christian life without being persecuted. You cannot do the right thing without being persecuted. It's not possible. It's not possible. So God allows his scriptures to be fulfilled. And he's not, you see, when I sometimes, you look, realize that we are nothing in the sight of God. So God is not interested in impressing us. Oh, the time for you to know that God is God. The time that he will reveal himself in his glory. That day will surely come. But for now, he is allowing his scriptures to be fulfilled. We ask ourselves another question. Why do evildoers continue in their evil over and over and over and over? Why doesn't anything stop them? Because the scripture must be fulfilled. 
The Bible says that in the last days, evil doers will get worse and worse and worse. And because they get so bad, the love of many Christians will get cold. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And I want to tell you, all the scriptures in the Bible are going to be fulfilled. So, whether you like it or not, whether you believe in it or not, whether you want it or not, the Bible is telling us that these things are going to come to pass. It's not a matter of any angel appearing to come and do anything. The Bible says the church will be persecuted. Once you are doing the right thing, no matter who you are, you will be persecuted. Be it America, be it Ghana, be it Rwanda. It, it will come in its own way. There are pastors in America who, who helicopters fly over their house, filming them, taking photographs. They harass them with the press, harassing them with the media. All sorts of harassment. In different countries, in different ways, the persecutions come. They, they, they come in different ways. But persecution must surely come. Why didn't Jesus stop Judas? Because the scripture had to be fulfilled that he would come to this earth and that he would be betrayed and that somebody would betray him. Make sure you are not one of the people who will be used to fulfill scriptures. Why are people falling away from Christ? Why? Why is it that many are called and few are chosen? Why is it that so many of us are here on Easter Sunday morning? Many of you don't come to church normally. Oh yeah, I've got to be frank with you. Because why doesn't the angel why, why doesn't the angel appear in your house and tell you go to church? No angel is going to come. I'm asking you a question. Will the angel come? The angel will not come. Why doesn't the angel appear in your house and tell you? Don't, 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 don't backslide. No, because the scripture says that many are called, but few are chosen. So by all means, some will start and some will fall. Oh God. Hey. It means that some will start. Take, are you getting that? No matter what I do as a pastor, some will start and some will not make it. Oh. Why doesn't the angel appear and tell the people? No, it's not that way. That's what the scripture says. So you decide today that you are not going to be among those who are used to fulfill scriptures. I see you escaping in Jesus' name. It's not just by saying yes. Why is it that God doesn't send his angel to stand up? I remember the insults that I've received. I remember one one day when we were being attacked was 31st night. And I, stu- I stood up here. And there was a young man who stood down for about 5 to 10 minutes. The boy stood there and insulted me and cursed me. I will never forget that boy. Oh, yeah. And you ask, why would the Lord allow? Oh, it must happen. Because the scripture says you can never be greater than your master. If they did it to Jesus, they will do it to you. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. If they did it to him, they'll do it to you. If they honored him, they'll honor, they honor you. But they didn't honor him, so they won't honor you. I remember, I remember once I just, I just saw, I think it was, I think it's even the same, the same young boy. As I passed by and uh, when he saw me, he just turned around like that and just insulted me. I was just looking at him through my mirror. I said, Lord, the scriptures must be fulfilled. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Why doesn't the angel appear and just, you know, I said, that's what just, the Lord should just send a baby angel. No. Certain things must happen. I said, certain things must happen. Why doesn't God send an angel to your brother who is not being saved? Yeah! Why doesn't he send an angel to your house to talk to the people there? Why doesn't God, why if God knows that they will die and they will go to hell? Why doesn't he send an angel? Why doesn't he send an angel? Why doesn't he send an angel to us to tell us to be saved? Why doesn't he send an angel or let an angel appear so that we'll be afraid? 
The Bible says that God has determined and chosen that by the foolishness of preaching, men should be saved. There is no other way that you can be saved except you humble yourself to the preaching of the word of God. No angel is going to come. If you ask me, will the angel appear and tell you that God is real? This is life, this is real, heaven is real, hell is real. No angel is going to appear. If you don't believe when we preach to you, you will not believe if an angel comes from the dead. Why doesn't God send an angel? Why doesn't he send an angel? Why doesn't he send an angel to the, to the fields and to the highways and to the hedges? Why doesn't he send an angel? Oh, lighthouse. Why doesn't God send an angel? Why doesn't he send an angel to the villages and to the towns? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. Because God has determined that people should go out there and preach his word. And he's not sending any angel. It is in his word. And that's why Paul said that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you today that God is not sending no angel. If we won't go, then it's not going to be done. So Lord, if you just send an angel to us and see everybody in that town will be saved. No. No angel is coming there. No angel is coming to Accra. That's why we have a job to do. And that's why we cannot let God down. That's why we cannot, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot forfeit our important task that God has given to us. Will the angels appear? The answer is no. Even Jesus, when he was being at the Son of God, for the angel to appear for the people to know. Oh Lord, my father doesn't easily believe. The Bible says that God has determined that we should be saved by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. Without faith, it is impossible. We had a drama here on Good Friday. I wish they had done it. I wanted to tell them, but I didn't know how to tell them. Should have done it for you to see how it is when people die. You just die and then wake up, you are in a new world. You should have seen it on Good Friday. Dear friend, let me tell you, no supernatural angel is going to come to you and tell you to behave. If you can't hear, as we preach now, too bad. This is it. I said, this is it. You are hearing all you are going to hear. Because the scripture must be fulfilled. God has chosen. God has decided. He's going to use human beings. Because I sought for a man, not an angel. Jesus said, go ye to all the world. He's decided. We are the ones he's going to use. So if you don't accept us, as we preach, you are not going to accept it. And those of you watching me by television, why didn't the angels come and show themselves? Why doesn't, why doesn't God make an angel appear by my side for you to know that what I'm saying is true? Why doesn't he do that? More people will believe, but he has chosen that you must be saved by faith and only by faith. So as you hear me, sitting in your home, hear me well. You must be born again. If you don't humble yourself and listen to those of us whom God has sent, then you will not believe and you will find yourself going to hell one day. I want to pray with you if you listen to me. This Easter Sunday or any other time you are hearing, you must be born again. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, I want you to pray this prayer with me as you listen to me out there. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I realize that I am a sinner. I realize that I don't know you. Come into my heart. Save my soul. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. I believe in you today. I humble myself today. Please write my name in the book of life. From today, I will follow Jesus. I will serve Jesus. Please write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Father for saving me. I believe I don't have to wait for any angel. I know that no angel will appear, but I believe anyway. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And for those of us in here, I want us to just bow down our heads for a moment, and I want you to listen carefully. If you are here this morning, maybe somebody invited you to church, but I want to tell you, our time is up for this morning. If you are not born again, you won't go to heaven. And, and I, 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 God is telling, you, telling me to tell you that not, 
there's not, nothing is going to happen. No angel is going to come and tell you to do the right thing. You must be saved, this and that. No. Today, as you hear the sound of this vessel, Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. If you are not, you don't give your life to Jesus, there is no other way by which you can be saved except through Jesus Christ. If you are here today, you want to be born again, you want to give your life to Jesus, just raise up your right hand and I'm going to pray with you this Easter Sunday. God bless you. I see your hand. Let's all stand to our feet. Lift up your hand if you want to give your life to Jesus.